Hey, what's up Blender users, I'm Jonathan, and today we'll have a look at how to make realistic LEGO renders. I dabbled with this topic because of an upcoming school project, and because there are many dead ends when trying to import LEGO models into Blender, I thought I'd make a quick video about what's possible and what's not. For the project, I wanted to use models from the LDRAW library. When running the LDRAW installer, it will download a small model library as well as LDView, which is just a viewer program for these LEGO files. So in LDView, we can open files, like these modular buildings, inspect and also export them. You can see that these pre-downloaded files are saved as MPD files, and LDView can export these files as either POV Ray, STL or 3DS. But all of these file types are files which we cannot use in Blender. The 3DS importer was discontinued after 2.79. Using Blender's native POV bridge results in errors when importing these files, and STL files don't save materials, so I needed another solution. And the solution I settled with is Mechabricks. Mechabricks themselves offer a large variety of models, but their workshop allows you to import MPD files. So let's quickly import this building. And once all of the assets are loaded in, you should have this visualization of the building. Right now everything is red, because you've selected the building. When clicking away, all of the materials will show. Mechabricks offer a free, a free Blender add-on on their store page, which you can use to import these models from the workshop into Blender. So let's go to File, Export and choose Blender add-on. And now we'll export this LEGO file as ZMBX. Once you've downloaded the Blender Lite plugin from Mechabricks, you want to unzip it so you'll get the Mechabricks Lite.zip file. Over in Blender, you can then go to Edit, Preferences, Install from File, and Install and Activate the plugin. Once that is done, you can go to Import and ZMBX. This will allow you to import these LEGO files into Blender. But you can see that there are some issues. First of all, the model is way too big. So let's scale it down by a lot. For me, this is going to be 0 0.01. With numpad dot, we can zoom into it, just like this, and now all of the Z fighting is gone. Now you can see that because of the conversion, the LEGO figures are messed up. But this is okay for now. We can either delete them or leave them as they are. Let's quickly place a camera into our scene just like this and switch to cycles. When selecting any brick you can see that we have pre-made materials. I would suggest you to go into the base material node group and set the subsurface scattering value to zero. This will improve render times by a lot. To quickly render this object we can add in the sky texture and connect it to the background node in the world editor of the shader editor. With Ctrl and B, we can draw around our camera so we only see what we need to see. And now we can play around with, for example, the sun size, its elevation and rotation to get the best lighting possible. For a miniature effect, you can select the camera, right click and choose depth of field distance pick, pick a distance, enable depth of field and turn down the f-stop by a lot. You can fine-tune this effect by showing limits and exactly adjusting where in the scene it should be the sharpest. For some extra realism, you can go back into your base material node group and add in a smudges texture. This texture is a free one from Polygon and I just imported it and used object coordinates and the box projection for texture mapping. Because we cannot really preview image textures in this material node group, let's add in a diffuse shader connect the smudges texture to the color input and connect the shader output to the shader input of the group output node. You can now see that everything looks pretty tiled, even though we used a scale of 0 0.001. To fix this issue, we can use the object info node and connect the random output into the location vector input. This will randomize the texture location for each object and make our whole scene look a lot more realistic. You can then set the color space of the texture to non-color, which you should always do except for color images, and then adjust the roughness with a color ramp. Awesome! 
We can then connect the principal PSTF shader back to the shader output and render our scene. And yeah, that's basically it. This is how we can easily import any LEGO file into Blender. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. And we'll see each other in the next video next Saturday.